Jordan, Jordan, Jordan. You know what, I was literally about to start my Magic vs LeBron video today, but I guess that's going to be postponed. And today, we're gonna have to revisit the classic debate of the 2000s. Kobe Bryant vs LeBron James. We all thought it was over, that LeBron was far ahead of Kobe, until a couple days ago when Michael Jordan just let out a bomb and said he'd pick Kobe over LeBron because of five rings. And it got people thinking. And it got me thinking, is LeBron really better than Kobe? And now here we are, you're watching this video for us to decide who's better, LeBron James or Kobe Bryant. But if you're new, check the description for the rules and how the scoring system works because I am not going to repeat it every video. But with that being said, let's get started. Scoring, Kobe 9, LeBron 9. So scoring to me is way closer than I expected to the point where I believe it's a tie. And I know Kobe's had those crazy stretches of multiple 50 point games and the 81 points. But if you're going to say that Kobe is a better scorer simply for those reasons, then I respectfully disagree. Because throughout their careers, LeBron has been just as good, if not a better scorer in his career. And I know I know the scoring champs, the scoring champs, but I've said this before, scoring championships are based solely on points per game, that's it. There is no efficiency considered, the system they're playing in, the role, none of that. And especially if the difference is only one scoring championship, then to me it's basically non-existent. But going back to points per game, if you look at LeBron from his rookie year till now, compared to Kobe from his second year in the league to 2013, the time frame in which he was playing over 25 minutes per game and before his injuries and his farewell tour. In the regular season, LeBron was higher in points per game, field goal percentage, three point percentage, while basically having the same amount of attempts per game from the field. The only thing that Kobe has on LeBron is free throw shooting. And if we look at the playoffs, the only thing that changes is a three point percentage and that goes to Kobe but barely. The point of these graphs is not to show that LeBron is a better scorer, although you can take it that way, but it's to show that they're on the same level with only inches separating them apart. They're two of the best scorers of all time, but based on what I'm looking at, I simply can't put one over the other. Passing, Kobe 6.5, LeBron 8.5. So this one we all know goes to LeBron by a pretty significant margin. I mean, before LeBron, when have we really called someone a point forward? I guess Magic, but he was a point guard coming out of college already. This one is pretty simple. LeBron and Kobe basically have the same amount of turnovers per game throughout their whole career, except LeBron averages a full two assists per game, and this applies in both the regular season and in the playoffs. However, I will say Kobe doesn't get enough credit for being a good passer. In my opinion, he was well above average, just not good to call him a distributor like a LeBron James or a Chris Paul or someone of that nature. And all those secondary assists were not recorded until 2013, I'm almost positive LeBron has had more of those as well, but the gap most likely isn't big. Rebounding, Kobe 6.5, LeBron 8. So again, this one is pretty easy. LeBron averages a full two more rebounds in the regular season. And then the playoffs, the gap increases to 3.6, a near four more rebounds per game. Again, Kobe is an above average rebounder for a guard. I mean, five rebounds per game for a 19 year career is pretty damn good. But LeBron wins this one pretty easily as well. I would have gave LeBron an 8.5, but I just feel as if rebounding as a category shouldn't affect the score as much as it should, so I just toned it down by half a point. Defense, Kobe 8.5, LeBron 8. Now defense, this one is a little bit trickier because it really depends on what's needed. Kobe was a great defender for his time because the game was so isolation centered and more one on one than it is now. Meanwhile, LeBron is a great defender for this time period because of his ability to play terrific help defense, switch off screens and be a one-on-one -on -one defender at times, but the reason I'm going to put Kobe above LeBron is because of longevity. Kobe has been a part of the All-NBA defensive teams 12 times in his career, while LeBron has only been in 6. And I know Kobe's had a longer career, but even if you look at the first 14 years, 
it only shaves off one all defensive selection making it 11 to 6 and again i think that lebron is more of a versatile defender but kobe was so good at the defensive aspects he was good at that it slightly surpasses lebron and this is in no way to slight lebron as a one-on-one -on -one defender there was a period in time where lebron was a top five perimeter defender in the league they're both terrific but i'm gonna have to give the edge to kobe just slightly for longevity intangibles kobe 9 lebron 9 so this one is again one of the hardest ones to judge because there's really no metric to rank intangibles and that's why i gave them a tie because intangibles to me is something you can't measure and i think kobe had that mamba mentality that killer mentality and how we take over games and instill fear in you and he showed it through destroying you on the court. He go through the four possessions straight of just getting points and hitting these tough shots that just demoralizes you and your team and his troops follow. Meanwhile, with LeBron, he also has that capability. He's just not known for it and doesn't display it as much, but he is extremely capable of doing so. And when it comes to both, they've both helped their teams win and have had a tremendous amount of success in their own ways and both are students of the game with extremely high IQs. So I'm gonna give both of them a 9. Leadership. Kobe 7.5. LeBron 9.5. Now I'm not trying to take anything away from Kobe's leadership skills, but throughout LeBron's career, he's been by far one of the best leaders in NBA history. And when you compare him to Kobe, the difference is a two point difference. LeBron wasn't just expected to lead his team out of the gate from high school. He was expected to lead the whole city of Cleveland and to an extent the whole league with the hype he was getting, being called the chosen one. And what he did was as fine of a job as anyone can ask for, leading them to the finals in 07 in his third year and I don't care about his competition on the way there, he still led that team in that journey. Two 60 plus win seasons with less than adequate help, led the Heat to two championships, led the Cavs when he came back in 2015 with both Love and Kyrie out. In 2016, being down 3-1 against the Warriors and even this year, even though he lost, his team looked up to him for leadership and in my opinion, he did a fantastic job. Kobe on the other hand, still was a great leader, hence the 7.5. He was terrific in 08, 09, 2010. In 2011, not so much, but in 2013 with the whole team fighting injuries, he was terrific. I just feel like throughout LeBron's career, he's had more responsibilities than Kobe and delivered more than Kobe. Meanwhile, Kobe's had chemistry problems in almost every stage of his career and wasn't really the leader in two out of those three championships early on. The only reason I didn't give LeBron a full 10 is mainly because of 2011 and some minor mishaps. Accolades. Kobe 8.5, LeBron 9. Two of the most accomplished players in NBA history. But if Michael Jordan is a 10 and Bill Russell is a 9.5, I think LeBron sits gladly at a 9 with Kobe right behind him with an 8.5. Although Kobe does have more all-star games, all defensive teams, one more scoring champ, and a couple more all-star games, I think that is more than made up by three more MVPs, one more finals MVP, and the rookie of the year. And it's not like with MJ where it would be extremely hard to catch the MVPs, the rings, and the scoring championships. With Kobe, the All-NBA teams are literally just a matter of time. And the same goes with the All-Stars, so I don't really hold a value in those. And remember, his first All-Star selection came when he averaged 15 points, 3 rebounds, and 2 assists. To put that in perspective, Avery Bradley averaged better in all three categories last season and wasn't an All-Star. And his last three was basically just out of respect. Clutchness. Kobe 8. LeBron 8. This is probably the most controversial one. Clutchness. Since LeBron has gotten this rep as one of the biggest chokers in NBA history, which he is, while on the other hand, Kobe has made this legacy and this persona of being one of the clutchest players in history, which he is, but LeBron doesn't get enough credit for being clutch. And let's get the biggest point out of the way, which I'm not defending in any way. To me, it's the biggest choke in NBA history by a superstar. 2011, where LeBron was simply horrendous scoring 
two points or less in the fourth quarter, sometimes even going scoreless, eight points overall in some games. It was horrendous. I am not defending that in any way. But let's not act like two rounds before, Kobe and the Lakers got swept, where Kobe averaged 23 points, three rebounds, and two and a half assists with two steals on 46% shooting from the field and 23% from three. And let's not act like 2004 didn't happen for Kobe as well, where he averaged basically the same stats as he did against Dallas in 2011, except shooting 8% less from the field and 18% from three and more turnovers. And that was with one of the most hyped up super teams of all time with Karl Malone, Gary Payton, Shaquille O'Neal, and Kobe Bryant against a Pistons team where they were the heavy favorites. And before we bring up the whole LeBron got saved by Ray Allen and Kyrie argument, let's not act like Kobe didn't average 41% from the field and 32% from three in 2010 in the finals and just as many assists as turnovers. And in game seven where he shot 25% from the field, 0 for six from three, while Pat Gasol had 19 points and 18 rebounds and Ron Artest had an uncharacteristic 20 points. Let's not act like Kobe didn't blow a 3-1 lead in 2006. And clutch is not, I repeat, not just last second game winners. But I'm not trying to trash Kobe. He's finishing the top 10 in clutch scoring for 12 years in a row from 2001 to 2013. And the amount of difficult shots he's hit in clutch situations is insane. Meanwhile, LeBron has for sure held up his own by playing big time in big games for a full 48 minutes instead of specific moments. And to me, that's equally just as clutch. For example, in game sevens, LeBron outscores Kobe by nearly 12 points, shoots 7% better, and three more assists, with the rebounds being virtually the same. And a similar trend can be found in elimination games. So if anything, based on these stats, LeBron should be more clutch than Kobe. But I'd still make it a tie since Kobe has been more consistent in being clutch. Value. Kobe 7.5, LeBron 10. To me, LeBron James is the most valuable player of all time. I simply do not know anyone who impacts a team's success when he's on their team compared to when he's not from the regular season all the way down to a minute by minute basis more than LeBron James. The only one that comes close is Bill Russell. And if you think that's laughable, I would suggest you look at the three years prior to Bill Russell's arrival and the four years after he retired. But regardless, LeBron's value is simply undeniable. He's led a team with Mo Williams as the second best player to 66 wins. I don't care what the conference is, that is extremely impressive. And his negative impact on the Cavs is simply astronomical. One off season of losing LeBron and a coach change makes the Cavs go from a 60-20 team to a 20-60 team? That is ridiculous. Meanwhile, with Kobe, I mean, a 7.5 on an all-time scale is extremely valuable. But let's be real. His value over replacement is all the way down at 16th. And this is nearly 20 years of work we're adding up here. While the difference between LeBron and 2 on this list is the same difference between 7 and 14. And LeBron's done this in 14 years compared to Kobe's 19. LeBron's win shares is 7th all time while Kobe's all the way down at 15th. LeBron's plus minus is number 1 all time while Kobe's is at 35. And when LeBron left Miami, I know Chris Bosh was injured, but even in the games he did play, they were still on pace for a 41-41 record. Now with Kobe, I I'm sorry, but to me the difference between LeBron and Kobe is 2.5 points. In 2000, Shaq averaged 38 points and 17 rebounds in the finals, while Kobe averaged 16-4-4 on 37% shooting from the field. They were gonna win that championship with or without Kobe, and in their 3 peat when Shaq was out, the Lakers were barely a 500 team at 12-11, with Kobe leading the way. And when Kobe was out in that time span, the Lakers were 25-7. This either shows how good Shaq was, or how less valuable Kobe was, or maybe both. But I think 2013 and 2008 to 2010 was enough for me to call Kobe a great leader. Competition, Kobe 8.5, LeBron 7.5. I think this one is maybe one of the most underrated parts of Kobe's career compared to LeBron. 
the competition. Because we can't just look at accolades and say, oh, this guy has more rings, and that's it. Look at the teams Kobe has had to face in the 2000s. The Spurs, the early 2000s Kings, the Mavs, the Suns, prime Kevin Garnett, the Nuggets with Melo and Iverson, and also the one with Melo and Billups, the Thunder when they were young, the Rockets with T-Mac and Yao, and in the finals, the 04 Pistons, the 08 Celtics, and well, that's where it kind of falls off. His competition was always extremely hard going to the finals, but once he got there, he was rarely the underdog. Meanwhile, LeBron's competition to the finals was the big three Celtics, the Pistons, the 2011 Bulls, those gritty Pacers teams, and that's basically it. And I think probably only one of those teams stack up to the teams Kobe has had to face prior to the finals in his career. But in the finals, he's faced the Spurs, the Mavs, the Thunder, and a 67 plus win Warriors team for three straight years. The closest thing LeBron has had to a freebie in the finals was 2011, which is a shame because that's the one that hurt his legacy the most and that's the one he lost. But I feel like the 1.5 difference is due to the competition Kobe has had to face year in and year out and he would have to face around two to three championship caliber teams per playoff run. Meanwhile, LeBron at the most will face two prior to the finals, and that's pretty rare. However, his competition in the finals closes the gap a little bit. And that is all the categories, folks. At the end of the day, Kobe has a grand total of 79 points, while LeBron has a grand total of 86.5. So Jordan, please stop this debate because I swear, man, I thought this ended three years ago, and I was supposed to make a Magic vs. LeBron video, but this came in short notice. But with that being said, I know I will get hate on this video somewhere, somehow. Just let it rain, bro. Just let it rain. But if you like the content and want more of these, please consider subscribing and follow me on Twitter to vote for the next Battlegrounds video. But with that being said, I am out. Peace.